Hello, Amber here and welcome back. If you're enjoying these reviews and you want more through body content, please like and subscribe. Also, congratulations to Tencent as it looks like season two will begin filming and a spinoff is in the works. This is really exciting news for all the fans. Today, I'm going to begin with episode 19 and continue all the way to episode 23. But with episode 19, we begin and Yao Wenjia meets with Mike Evans in the remains of Red Coast Base. My only criticism of this episode was the dubbing. The series probably wasn't made with Americans in mind, so it's probably not a problem for anyone else, but Mike Evans' English isn't American English. This is a very minor criticism, and I don't think it detracted from the story. I'm probably not the base of people that the show was created for. Regardless, the big bombshell of this episode is that the real mission of Red Coast Space is to contact aliens, and the reaction from De Shi is perfection. My favorite moment came from Bing Bing. Not only can she do the work of 10 men, she can explain complex things so easily that a child could understand. Dasha isn't quite grasping the technological race that would result when one nation would be first to make contact over another, and I love that Dasha is kind of a stand-in for viewers who might also not understand. So when Bing Bing simply states that it's like getting a book about mastering martial arts, and whoever gets it first learns the skills and becomes invincible. It simplifies the concept really well. We also get our first glimpse into Dark Forest theory in this episode when Ye Wenjia presents the comment that Earth hasn't made contact with other life forms because aliens have chose to keep silent for some reason. It was really fun getting the first glimpses of Wei Cheng's backstory, and I found the sequence of the three spheres quieting his mind really fun and really well done. Great episode. So now I'm going to continue to number 20. And this continues Wei Cheng's story during his time in the monastery. I really like this actor, and that's not a surprise at all because all of the actors so far have been top notch. The big concept of this episode is that there is no solution to the three body problem. Wei Chang cannot find a solution, and this runs parallel to Wang Miao's time inside the three body game. What I love about this episode is that you actually start to feel sorry for the Trisolarans, and I believe that this is the goal of the game. It's creating sympathizers on Earth. It took the Trisolarans 90 million years to recover from the Great Rip. The idea of this level of destruction happening again is a powerful message, and it makes this game really ingenious. People are going to feel sorry for the plight of the Trisolarans. The episode ends with Shen Yufei's death, and we move to episode 21. Han Han is interrogated about her death, but cameras inside her home show that she killed herself. And what's really striking about this episode is how Wang Miao, De Shi, and Wei Cheng are all really affected by her death. And especially De Shi, he considers Shen Yufei an adversary. Every death is tragic, and what's even more tragic is Wei Cheng's breakdown, ripping the blanket off of his wife to do more calculations. It's absolutely heartbreaking. He has lost everything. His wife, his comfortable life, and his obsession with the solution to the three-body problem. Now, Wang Miao goes to a group meetup and is welcomed into the ETO. This was a moment in the books that had a really big impact on me. The discussion revolves around the topic of the conquistadors reaching the New World and conquering the Aztecs. The Adventists believe human society is incapable of regulating itself. They say that the invasion on America prevented the Aztecs from turning America into a dark, and bloody empire without democracy. And this is a line directly from the books, and it shows how radicalized that these people have become to begin believing that this is okay. Now, Pan Han's computer is hacked by the reporter, and at this point, the Battle Command Center is fully mobilized. Trisolarans are coming, 
and Earth is like the Aztecs. Things are about to get wild. So episode 22 begins, and using the help of Panhan's hacked files, the Battle Command Center does the Adventist job for them and purges many of the Redemptionists from the organization, picking them up, taking them into custody. Han Han expertly peels an apple and meets with the reporter, and things do not look good for her. My favorite part of this episode was the game segment, where the Trisolaran fleet starts a new era and heads for Earth. The visuals were beautiful, especially considering the budget. I want to hate Trisolarans, but again, the game really excels in making people sympathetic. It's such a great moment in the television show. Like the Conquistadors, Trisolaran's technological advancement is greater than Earth's, and the ships have a capability of traveling at one-tenth of the speed of light. They will arrive ready to conquer in 400 to 500 years, so they say. The visuals are absolutely awe-inspiring. I love this moment so much. It was incredible to watch. We move to the ETO's assassin who kills the reporter after she learns who the commander is and all signs point to Yeowenjia. I really liked all of the moments in this episode dealing with the reporter's murder and the crime scene investigation, but I especially liked Dusha's emotional reaction while getting coffee. He tried so hard to get this reporter out of harm's way, and I have a feeling the guilt is going to weigh on him heavily. Will he act with restraint going forward or retribution? I can't wait to see. He's hands down my favorite character, and knowing what's about to happen, I'm really excited to see his performance in episode 24, which I have not watched yet. So let's move to episode 23. This was all out pandemonium. Definitely my favorite of the bunch. At the grave of Yang Dong, we see Ye Wenjia wearing a pin of her alma mater school, Tsinghua University. I hope I am saying that correctly. There is also a mysterious man standing next to her. If you've read The Dark Forest, you probably know who it is. I'll go into that a little bit further at the very end of this episode as it's kind of a spoiler, so I'm not going to say it just yet. This moment was amazing. What a cameo. So excited. The writers really know what they are doing. Another great moment is Dasha reassuring Wang Miao that once he's inside this ETO meeting, Dasha will protect him, so he better not do anything dumb. I love the chemistry between these two characters and actors. It is just top notch. Great performances all around the board. The actress playing Ye Wenjia also amazing. So within this meeting, we learn that the Adventists aren't relaying all the messages from Trisolaris to the ETO, and Ye Wenjia and her assassin make quick work of Pan Han and his treachery. He did not stand a chance. This ETO meeting is incredible and pure chaos. I've been looking forward to this all season. Just when it reaches a fever pitch, Tencent dials things back a little bit and the pace slows down and now it's story time. Yeowenjia leans in and tells the tale of her story at Red Coast Base. This is such a critical moment within the books. Yeowenjia is tasked with solving the problem of solar interference. This is the reason that their messages aren't being put into space like they should. The sun is essentially kind of acting like a shield. There's a beautiful montage and it ends there. I'm finding myself having a hard time working on recording this episode because I just want to get back to the TV show. And looking at this season so far, just through the lens of the episodes that I've watched, I sometimes wished that all television shows had the courage to follow as closely to the books as Tencent is doing with this adaptation. And while some people may prefer shorter, faster-paced shows, Three Body forces the viewer to slow down and take in all the subtleties. It also really mimics the tone of the book. It's a pensive story, and this impending dread becomes greater and greater. And I appreciate this, because I have a feeling that the last episodes are going to be a wild ride. So if you're liking this show, I can assure you, 
season two that is adapting the dark forest is going to be really interesting and i think everybody will be in for a treat like i said in the beginning if you're enjoying these videos please like and subscribe to the channel and before i go i'm going to talk about the mystery man who was at yang dong's grave if you don't want to know any spoilers i would recommend leaving now so this man at the grave is none other than Leo Ji, and he is a main character of book two and a fan favorite for good reason. Showing him at this moment, or at least alluding to him, is such a great idea. This is something that happens in the Dark Forest, not in Three Body Problem. And again, it's just showing that the creators of this show have an idea in mind. And it also makes me think that they had a pretty good idea that this was going to be a hit. It's really great seeing this character just being alluded to in a book that he's not supposed to show up in, and I'm really excited. I, I can't wait for The Dark Forest, and I'm really hoping that more people pick up these books. I truly believe that it is a must-read for any science fiction fan. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you back for the next few episodes, and I will see you next time.